Keyframed animations are a very powerful way to define animations, whether it is to move a camera during a cutscene or animate a character's subtle movements. However, GameMaker does not provide us with any mechanism to define them out of the box. In this tutorial, we'll go over an effective way to define and use keyframes in GameMaker. We are going to start off by defining an example keyframe animation as it is where the core of the logic happens. A keyframe script will accept a frame number as an argument and will return the info about this frame. For now, we'll use a simple if statement to check the frame number and return a single value. Next, we notice that the keyframe number is increased by one every time, so we can abstract it using a local variable as shown. Every time an if statement is evaluated, underscore f is being incremented. As it stands, the script can only return a single value, but we would like our keyframe setup to animate multiple values. A quick way to return multiple values is to use arrays. However, using arrays literals in this manner can be a little confusing, so we declare variables and assign to them instead. We can then return the array at the end of the script. This makes our keyframes more legible and keeps the ordering of the values consistent. Later on, this will also allow us to skip updating values for every keyframe. Now we can start making the setup more natural to use. The first thing to realize is that each of our if statements are now identical, so you can use a macro instead. We don't want to have to define the frame variable at the start of every keyframe animation, so we replace it with argument zero. The same with underscore f. When defining keyframes, we don't need to think about the underlying code, and so we abstract that into its own macro. However, there is an issue. The current version of GameMaker does not allow for argument zero to be used in macros. This is because the macro could then be used outside of a script where arguments are not allowed. A fix is to instead pass the value to the script using a global variable. Although far from an elegant solution, it does work for our purposes. We create a new script named kfGetFrame, which will be used to get individual keyframes from our animation. The script will take the keyframes and frame number as arguments. We set our global variable to the frame number before executing our keyframe script. The script should now be able to get keyframe data from our animation scripts. However, we also want to be able to interpolate between keyframes based on time. Before we can do this, we need a time value for each of our keyframes. Back inside our keyframe scripts, we will use a global variable wrapped in a macro to define the time for each keyframe. This should allow us to access it outside the script once it has run. Our next and final script will be used to get an interpolated value from our keyframe data. We call it kfget. It will accept an animation and time as arguments. This script will find the two keyframes on either side of our time value and interpolate between them. We declare a couple variables. Frame will hold the frame after the time value and frame pre will hold the frame before our time value. We also declare time pre, which holds the time value of the previous frame. We then use a for loop to get the first frame after our time value. This is done by getting each keyframe from the animation until kf time gets greater or equal to our time value. We also keep track of the previous frame. Now that we have both frames to interpolate between, we need to compute how much to interpolate by. We store the result in t. Finally, we need to interpolate each of the values in the arrays. This is achieved with a simple for loop and a lerp function. You could use other functions than lerp, such as smooth step, if you need smoother animations. To clean things up, we move the macros from the keyframe script to a dedicated macro script. To test our setup, we create a simple sprite and object. We find our times in seconds, so we create a simple delta timing setup. We get our frame from our keyframes using kfget. We can then extract the individual variables from our animation frame. In this case, we are assigning them to x and y. Running the project, we see our object move, but as the last keyframe is reached, we get an error. This is because we are trying to access a non-existent keyframe. Luckily, there is a rather simple fix. We modify the keyframe macro to use greater or equal than rather than simply equals to. This means the keyframe will now be evaluated in order until the keyframe we are targeting. This means we should always get a value back and that we don't need to update every value every frame. Before running the game again, I increase the values in the keyframes to make the movement more apparent. I also remove the underscore y value in the second keyframe to demonstrate that they can be left out. Running now, we see our objects animating as per the keyframes and it no longer throws an error in the end of the animation. 
So this wraps up this tutorial. As you can see, this provides a very natural way to define keyframed animations, and because they are defined in scripts, they can easily be extended to encapsulate more behavior. A similar setup could be used as an alternative to timelines, or even as a way to define dialogue between different characters in a story. I hope you find this video useful. If you have, please give it a like, and I will see you guys next time for some more gaming tutorials.